Gracious Heavenly Father, I just come into your presence by means of our Lord Jesus Christ and in the Holy Spirit. So very thankful for your word, for the time that you've given us to feast upon it. I thank you so much, Lord, for all of your blessings in our lives, for all of that grace that you have just showered upon us to where that we stand before you without fault, without blame. I just give you all the honor and the glory and ask you to filter out any foolishness but seal to our hearts only that which is truth. For it's in Christ's name I pray. Amen. Hi, this is Steve at BlessedHopeForever.com. Honey and I are going to spend the day together, probably take a ride because the temperatures have lowered a little bit and it's not quite as hot as it has been. But I wanted to get a video up today so that I could get another one up Sunday. We're going to continue on in our study of the, to the epistle uh, of the Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians. This will be part 13. Now, I've titled this The Faithfulness of God, and, and I believe by the, end, the time we get to the end of the video, you'll understand why. So we're going to be looking at verses 12 through 28. Now, uh, some of the commentators have sort of labeled this passage the Christian life. I've chosen, I've opted to rename it the faithfulness of God. You know, just to say that the context here is Christian living is insufficient, in my opinion, and it places the emphasis on our doing and uh, Many of you are familiar with the verse, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves, James 1.22. And that verse is not saying that we're to conform our lives to the word, but that the word transforms our lives. That's what James means by those words. Let me give you an example. The word says that we've died to the law. Well, will you become a hearer of that only or a doer Jesus who is the Word of God calls himself the vine and he calls us the branches we don't produce righteousness on a human level all righteousness is of the Lord righteousness is based on faith faith exercised equals the righteousness of God Will, will we become a hearer of that only or a doer? That's my question. Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. So the word says a lot about Christian living. And I counted 18 instructions in the next 11 verses. 18. Now, Folks, you can feverishly work. I mean, you can work tirelessly to try and accomplish all of, of what we're about to read. And it might even appear that you've succeeded to some extent in doing so. Or, or you can set your affection on Christ, not yourself, and just rest your tired and weary, worn out bones, believing for us to live is Christ, as Paul says, and to die, that is die to self, is gain. It's all about where our focus is, folks. Him or ourselves. That is the great secret. And millions of Christians, they think that this is complicated. Dearly beloved, it's not. First of all, God wouldn't make it complicated. Christ, not self. You can hardly look at a page of your Bible without seeing that simple distinction. But we're living in an age now where that, that we're not being taught this. We're not being taught that. We're being instructed to do just the opposite. You'll seldom hear it said today that our lives are the product of God's Word. We don't conform, uh, uh, shape, mold our lives to the Word. The Word itself transforms our lives. In verse 9 of the fifth chapter, we saw that He has not destined us for wrath. The word destined there is an aorist indicative. The aorist sees the action as a whole. 
but for obtaining salvation, deliverance through our Lord Jesus Christ. No wonder we're to comfort one another with these words. That is the groundwork that God has laid for us as we walk into the remainder of these verses. So beginning at verse 12, chapter 5, And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor, that is, labor in the Word, among you, and are over you in the Lord, and admonish you. To know them, the word there, know, is oida, it, it, it's perfect knowledge. In every, every one of our lives, God has ordained such persons. Notice it's plural, it's not singular. Such persons. Those, says the text. How do we know? Now here's where I want you to really pay close attention. How do we know? By His Word. It's the only way that we can know. Other people want to be that person, so we have to know them by what? God's Word. Which labor. In other words, they work hard at it. Dear, dearly beloved, spend time in God's Word. Verse 13, And to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. Not their personality, okay? But their work's sake. Regard them highly for what they do. What I say, say what I tell you may or may not be the truth. Test the spirits to see if they be of God. And be at peace among yourselves. Well, we have peace with God. We got peace with God. God has nothing against us, folks. I don't know how many Christians I have met in my life that believe that God has something against them. We're not to fight among ourselves. I'm not going to fight with you over the subject of our being made the righteousness of God in Christ or that we're not under law but grace, which would, would basically amount to my putting you under law to get you under grace. We are to proclaim the truth of God's Word, leaving the results up to God, not be the enforcer of it. It's when we do that that we fight among ourselves. Of course, I care about what you believe to be truth. I do care, okay? I mean, I, I wouldn't be a concerning Christian if I didn't. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be a pastor if I didn't care what you believe. I care whether or not you believe the truth. But I am not the arbitrator of it. And we are not individual judges appointed to settle disputes. If that was the case, every Christian would be a judge. Millions of judges judging one another. You know, millions of Christians as judges running around judging one another. Eliminate the judging of one another and we have nothing to fight about because that's not our job to convict, okay? Another important fact to consider is that what do I have, folks, that you don't have? What, what do you have that I don't have? What do you have that another brother or sister in the Lord doesn't have? Verse 14, Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, the word means to be slack in one's performance of his duty. I believe that to be undisciplined in the word. It's amazing as we go through this how much emphasis is put on God's word. Don't let that escape your notice. Comfort the feeble-minded, the discouraged. They need to know that God always causes us to triumph. That all things work together for the good that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory that will be revealed in us, and a myriad of other things. Now, we don't comfort the discouraged by arguing with them over what we think that they ought to do or not do. Support the weak. I believe that to be primarily the spiritually sick. If you feast upon His Word, you cannot be weak. Be patient toward all men. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good. And I believe the good there it, it, to be the Word. Don't look at it as just good, good actions, good behavior. I believe the good is the Word. Follow that, both among yourselves and to all men. Not revenge. It's not about getting even or getting satisfaction. Rejoice evermore. Now stop and think. We can rejoice. Why? Because our God is sovereign and doesn't allow anything to touch our lives except it be for our ultimate good. 
considering who we are and all we have been given, considering all that God's done, considering all that God will do, how could we not rejoice? Verse 17, pray, that is worship without ceasing. Prayer is an act of worship. Communicate with God. In every single thing, everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ concerning you. The flat tire, the lost job, the ornery old mare. Listen, folk, dearly beloved, in every single thing, give thanks. Everything. This is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. The flat tire, you know, the, the, the breakup of a relationship, whatever the case may be, in everything give thanks. What does our not giving thanks say? Well, it says that God is not sovereign. Quench not the Spirit. I believe that that is to be going against the truth, the truth of God's Word. There is so much emphasis on His Word here, folks, in the text, if you take the time to look. Despise not prophesyings. What is, what is that? That is the gift of communicating and enforcing revealed truth. Again, the Word. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. How do we do that? The Word. See if it agrees with Scripture. Test all things. That is through the word abstain from all appearance of evil well what is evil sometimes i think it's her what is evil well it's primarily anything contrary to the word of god not merely the obvious things that we recognize as evil actually she has a nickname it's it's the antichrist all right she has a will and a mind of her own. She's the antithesis of everything that we ought to be as believers in Christ. But you know what? I would not be happy without her. Is that right? Huh? So yeah, I believe that quenching the Spirit, quenching the Spirit is going against the truth, the truth of His Word. We're not to despise prophecy, prophesyings. That is the gift of communicating and enforcing revealed truth, whether it was back then or whether it's now. I don't believe God is giving any new, new revelation today. Okay, Everything that He wants us to know, He's already revealed in, in the truth of this book. Prove all things. Hold fast to that which is good. And I believe that is the Word abstain from all appearance of evil all appearance of evil folks the given the doctrinal context i be i believe that's primarily anything that goes contrary to scripture not merely that which we just know is evil and the very god of peace the very god of peace that is peace god's peace toward us sanctify set you apart set apart by god Set apart you wholly, and I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved, that is, guarded, blameless, until the coming of our Lord. And folks, we are promised all of that. We've been promised all of that. How? Through, I mean, how, by how, how? What means do we know that? Through His Word. And the next verse. Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. Okay? God is faithful. That's the testimony of God's Word. And I have to ask, folks, how could such a simple statement of truth such as that be so little understood, so little recognized, so little believed today by God's people? God is faithful you know you would almost think almost think that that's all you would have to tell people that god is faithful if, if or if you don't know anything else know that god is faithful and and you sh it shouldn't be difficult for us to imagine how that such a simple three words could transform our lives 
we don't conform our, we're not conforming ourselves to anything there it's the truth of god's word is transforming our lives god had his word recorded so that we could know him so that we could know his plan his will his purpose for our lives he wants us to know because it's through this knowing and that's where it begins folks that's why I've, I've emphasized over and over to feast upon his word it's through that knowing his word that we grow in grace and knowledge of christ that he changes our lives we don't bring about that change he does this is why we can have confidence in the effectiveness of his word to bring about that change jesus said sanctify them in truth thy word is truth in his prayer to the father and our enemy, the devil, he'd have us believe that we can know God without knowing God's Word. Well, we don't have to do, we don't have to, as long as we just, you know, kind of, I don't know, just use our own vain imaginations as to, as to what God is like and who He is and what He's done and what He's doing. And we don't really need to study too much. I mean, that's just, you know, all that, that's just, uh, you know, book smart type stuff. You know, that's, you know, we don't need doctrine. And he'll convince you of that. that. He'd have us believe that we we can know him without knowing his word. When he knows, I believe even Satan knows that Christ Jesus is the word. You know, truth such as you died with Christ to sin, and Satan, and the world, the law, especially to self. That Christ paid for all your sins. That you're eternally secure because of what? Your faithfulness? No. Because of His perfect work. That you're perfect in the inner man, the new man, that, that new nature that, which cannot sin. That this new life in Christ is actually Christ living His life through you and that you are now and for eternity co-seated with Christ in heaven. And that He's returning soon for you as we've seen in the context and that you have not been destined for wrath but for salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. And much of Christianity today is so far removed from these amazing life-changing truths. Why? Because its entire focus is on self, not Christ. I'm looking at at least 18 instructions in 11 verses. That's a lot directed toward us toward the believer in christ and i don't see where the focus here is on self at all now maybe you do but when i gaze across the landscape of the new testament and see that our focus is to be away from self to jesus christ i have to look at all of what we're looking at here all of these admonitions as reflecting what naturally occurs as a result of what christ has done in my life I have to see them as characteristics of the sinless new man that every one of us have. I have to see them as characteristics of His life, a lovely portrait of our Lord Jesus Christ and the life that He lives in and through our lives by faith. What faith? Our faith? No, because that may often fail, but by His faithfulness, that God is faithful. And folks, if we didn't have these admonitions, these commands, these instructions, these exhortations, the, if we didn't have a list okay, of what we should do and should not do, we would have no picture of His life. I've often said that I believe the Bible is not a book of instructions on how to live the Christian life, but it is primarily a revelation of the person and the work of Jesus Christ. So it all depends on how we approach the Word, folks. If you want to approach it from, the, from, the, from that simple aspect of, well, we just read it and do it. It doesn't matter about the context. Just ignore the context. Context doesn't matter. I just see where it says do something, I'm going to run out and try to do it. Or not do something and try to, you know, not do it. When you've come to understand very little about the struggle that Paul describes in Romans 7, where he says that what I want to do, I don't do. I find a, a principle at work in my life to where that what, what I don't want to do, that's, that's exactly what I wind up doing. Who shall deliver me? 
I thank God through Jesus Christ, my Lord. So with my mind, I serve the law of God, but with my flesh, the law of sin. And we come to verse 25. Brethren, pray for us. I constantly, I've constantly asked you for your prayers concerning this ministry. I am praying for you all constantly. 26. Greet. The word there is welcome. The brethren. All the brethren. With a holy, holy, that word means set apart by God. A holy kiss. Or I guess maybe today you'd say greet one another with a holy handshake. Or, or well, today, today that handshake, that'd be a handshake as long as you sanitized your hands beforehand. I think you get the point. We're to greet one another, welcome one another, with a set apart by God embrace. We're to embrace one another with, within that reality there. I charge you, pay attention. I charge, I charge you by the Lord. Not I, Paul, say. I charge you by the Lord that this epistle be read unto all the holy brethren. Folks, don't read that without realizing that is that which every child of God needs to know. Okay? Every child of God needs to know these precious life-changing truths. The truths of His faithfulness that we're under grace, not law. That He died in our place. That we did nothing to merit that. That we don't merit, do anything to merit His, His our departure that we're not going through that period of, of, of the time of, of Jacob's trouble, Daniel's 70th week, a myriad of truths, innumerable, uh, too many to count, okay, that we need to know that, is, that are contained within, many, many are right here within this one epistle, but Paul wrote 13 of them. And we have the entire New Testament, the New Covenant, uh, the New Testament of grace to guide us and direct us and focus, direct our attention toward things above, not on things below. Verse 28, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the grace, okay, be. Well, the word be isn't there in the original text. It's, uh, you know, with you, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. It, it literally says, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. That's what it says. The word be is not there. And amen, 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 amen. Many of you understand those words to mean, and we, we tend to brush over that. Well, we, you know, that's just a word, amen, okay, whatever. Don't don't stop. Don't pause. Don't hesitate. Don't give that any thought whatsoever because we all know what amen is. We hear it so constantly. It's, it seems to almost be a worn out word. Amen. So let it be. Don't, don't let that escape your notice. Don't brush over the meaning of the word. So let it be. So let what be? Grace. In fact, I'll, I'll, I'll suggest that, that that includes more than, than just grace, as, as wonderful a word as that is. It, it encompasses everything that God has said is true concerning our lives in our Lord Jesus Christ. And the epistle here ends with, it ends with grace, just as it began in chapter 1, verse 1. Go back, look at chapter 1, verse 1. It began with grace. It ends with grace. That's our life. Folks, I love you all. I truly do. I want to thank you all for your continued messages that you leave on YouTube that greatly encourage me. All of the feedback, the messages that you leave me on Facebook. I invite you to join us on Facebook. We're not hard to find. Visit our website. I appreciate every one of you who love his word and are studying together with us who, who help support this ministry. I appreciate you tremendously. I give thanks for you every day. Until next time, this is Steve. 
Thanks for watching.